It's good to be saved, amen. 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 Glad that God's still on the throne, ain't you? Amen. amen. The results are in. Amen. And He's still in control. Amen. Amen. Don't matter who's in the White House, it matters who's on the throne. Amen. amen. Matter of fact, I'm more concerned with who's on their way to heaven amen. and who's on their way to hell than I'm concerned with who's on their way to the White House. Amen. Amen. I, I just need to get that off my chest this week. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Genesis 25. Genesis 25 is uh, where we'll be looking at this morning. Uh, say, preacher, I'm having trouble finding it. Just open your Bible. Amen. You ought to, <laughs> it shouldn't be too bad hard. Amen. Amen. Say, preacher, I mean, I'm going to tell you how to get there. Go to Revelation and go back. And just keep a going. <laughs> Amen. Just keep a going. Amen. You'll get there. Eventually, by the end of the message, amen. So, <laughs> amen. Genesis 25, when you've turned there with us, we'll stand out of reverence of God's Word, if you can do that this morning. And uh, I want to read a few verses of Scripture. God gave me this thought, and, and uh, God, God really met with me on, on one particular verse in this, but uh, the Word of God's good, amen. Uh, it's where you can meet with God at, in the Word of God, amen, and His Word. Because it's written to us. Amen. Genesis 25, verse number 24 is where I want to begin reading. And the Bible says this, And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore his name was called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And verse number 32 is where I want you to really pay attention. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? Let's pray. Father, we desire your help. I need you to preach through us this morning, Lord. I need you to just take over. I can do nothing on my own, Lord. And Father, I pray that you'd take this message Help your people with it, Lord. I pray if there's one that's lost today that you'd save them for it's everlasting too late. In Jesus' name, and amen, and amen. You can be seated, amen. You know the story here in Genesis 25. If you've uh, uh, studied very far in your Bible, you ought to know this, amen. Uh, uh, we find here that uh, Jacob and Rebekah are married, amen, and uh, uh, she has come with child, amen. And by the way, amen, that's still how it goes. God's way, amen, you get married first, then have the child, amen, that ain't going to be popular in many places, amen, but that's right, amen, and uh, we find that she is with child of, of, of twins, amen, the Bible said there in verse 24 that there were twins in her womb, amen, and, and then we get some information on them, amen, Esau comes out first, amen, and we find about Esau that he was red and uh, uh, hairy all over, amen, uh, and, and then we find out that Jacob came holding on to Esau's heel, amen, uh, Jacob came in, in a sense of, uh, of just uh, of holding on, amen, already, amen, being the lesser of the two, amen, because he was having to hold on to his heel. Amen. There's no other way to put that. Amen. He was the lesser of the two. He was not the firstborn. Amen. Even though they were twins. Amen. And uh, so uh, uh, Isaac is three score years old when, when, when this happened. Amen. And the Bible gives us an account of how these boys were. Amen. They're twins, but they are different as night and day. Amen. Amen. Uh, we got Esau. Amen. The Bible said that he was a cunning hunter and a man of the field. Esau was somebody, amen, that he was spending his time outside. Amen. He was spending his time, amen, uh, uh, hunting, amen. He was what I guess you could call a man's man. Amen. He was, uh, he was doing the, uh, uh, the things that uh, maybe he'd seen his father do. Amen. And, 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 but the Bible said Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. 
Amen. You could call Jacob, and I'm not meaning any disrespect to him in this, but saying this, but Jacob was more of a mama's boy. Amen. Esau was more of a man's man out in the field working, and Jacob was staying at home. Amen. Uh, Esau was uh, hunting for the food, and Jacob was uh, cooking the food. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you kind of get that. Amen. Amen. And you find out that, uh, but the accordingly so, is how his parents preferred them. How their parents preferred them. Amen. Say, preacher, I ain't got a favorite of my kids. You lying. Amen. Lord have mercy. Amen. I got a favorite of your kids. Amen. But let me say this. Amen. Uh, 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 verse 28. Amen. I said Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. Amen. It said, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Amen. There was already conflict there. Amen. And we find our text here. We find there was a day when Esau had been out in the field. Amen. The Bible said in verse 29 that in Jacob sod pottage and Esau came from the field and he was faint. Say, preacher, what do you mean? Well, let me uh, say a few things about this situation. We find Esau here, he's tired from laboring. Amen. Matter of fact, let me put it this way to you. Amen. He'd been out working. Amen. He had been out uh, slaving away. He'd been out doing what maybe others didn't want to do. Amen. Uh, to help provide for the family. Amen. And he'd been working, amen. And, and he'd been working so hard that he was faint. Amen. That meant that he was almost at his wit's end. Amen. He was almost done. Amen. He was almost to the point where he was going to pass out. Amen. If he didn't get something to eat. Amen. If he didn't get something. Amen. He was on the brink of passing out. Amen. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. That's a good worker right there. Amen. He's not just giving his all. He's giving more than his all. Amen. He's doing things. Amen. That nobody else wants to do. Amen. He's working when nobody else wants to work. Amen. I mean, he is uh, really uh, trying to help provide. Amen. For his family. Amen. Why? Because his father loves him. Amen. You notice there in verse 28, it said, And Isaac loved Esau. Amen. Boy, there's a message right there. Amen. That if our father loves us, which by the way, if you wasn't here last week, go watch the message last week. We figured out he does. <laughs> amen. And, and, and let me say this to you. Amen. If our father loves us, amen, we ought to do a little bit for him. Amen. We ought to work a little while for him. Amen. We ought to go the extra mile for him. Amen. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean, uh, do the things that nobody else wants to do. Work when nobody else wants to work. Amen. I preach the messages that may not be popular. Amen. I come back to church on Sunday night and Wednesday night. Amen. I mean, uh, uh, go to a revival meeting. Amen. Uh, when the preacher calls revival, go to the church. Amen. Uh, clean up around the church. Amen. Help out when, the, when your neighbor needs help. Amen. Things of that nature. Amen. The things nobody else wants to do. Amen. Esau's out in the field working. And I find that he comes in and he's Faint from working. Amen. And the Bible said there in verse 30, Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, that same red pot is for I am faint. Amen. He said, For I am faint. I'm tired. Amen. And he asked Jacob, Amen, to, to feed him. But Jacob has a compromise waiting on Esau. Amen. He sees what Esau needs. Amen. Esau's done told him what he needs. Amen. He's faint. Amen. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. Verse 31. Now, can I just say this to you? Amen. There might be some of you here. Amen. You really are working. I mean, you're doing what uh, as much as you can possibly do, amen? You're reading your Bible, amen? You're studying the Word of God, amen? Your, your prayer life is, is where it ought to be, amen? You're, you're, you're uh, coming to church every time you, you can get here, amen? I understand, amen, that uh, sometimes uh, folks can't get here. I get that, amen? I'm not being ugly and saying that, amen? But I'm saying you, you, you're in the house of God every time you can get here, amen? Uh, you're studying your Bible, amen? You're doing everything. You're witnessing to your neighbors, amen? You're being a light in the world like we ought to be. Amen. And I want to say this to you, that if you're doing all that, it's going to make you faint. Amen. Not, not faint as in passing out, but it's going to make you, as, as, as Esau was, faint. Amen. Close to fainting. Amen. It's going to make you tired. Amen. Matter of fact, amen, uh, I don't know about you, you do, if you do a lot of work, amen, uh, uh, you, you'll get tired. It's just how it is. That's how we are in our human nature, our human body. Amen. 
Let me say this to you. You do a lot of work spiritually, amen, you'll get tired as well. Amen, you'll get tired as well. Amen. And let me say this to you. At some point along the way, amen, you're, you're going to get tired and you're going to have a need. And if you ain't careful, Satan will show up with a compromise. Satan will show up with a compromise. Amen. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. Look at this. Uh, Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. You know what he's saying to Esau? Amen. Uh, that's, there's a reason for the text uh, uh, ahead. Amen. For the text that we saw, uh, uh, we've already read. Amen. And tells us about how uh, Jacob came out. Amen. He, he, he's saying, hey, listen. Amen. You got something. Amen. That I want. Amen. You got something. Amen. Uh, that, that, that would really be useful to me. Amen. And I want you to sell it to me if I'm going to give you what you need in this moment. Amen. Can I say this to you? Satan wants your testimony. Boy, Satan, I, I'd say, preacher, I'm saved. Praise God you are. I'm glad you are. If you ain't saved, amen, I know a man that can save you this morning. Amen. And it ain't me, and it ain't Donald Trump, and it ain't Joe Biden. Amen. amen. That's good preaching right there, William. I thank you. Amen. But let me say this to you, friend. Amen. Uh, uh, if you are saved this morning, then, then there's no going back. Amen. You can't lose your salvation. Praise God for that. Amen. We still believe that around here, don't we? Amen. That's still Bible. Amen. Whether you believe it or not, it's the Word of God. Amen. You can't lose your salvation. Amen. But let me say this to you. You can lose your testimony fast. Amen. amen. You can lose your testimony real quick. Amen. And here comes Esau and he's got something. Amen. That Jacob wants. Amen. And Jacob can't get it unless Esau sells it. Amen. Let me say this to you. Satan cannot take your testimony unless you sell it to him. Amen. Uh, Satan won't just, uh, Satan, he can't take, amen, uh, your witness unless you sell it to him. Amen. Uh, that's the only way, amen, uh, that Esau, or that Jacob, rather, was going to get this birthright from Esau. Esau had to sell it to him. Amen. Uh, that's the only way it would happen. Amen. Let me say this to you this morning, church. Amen. Uh, Satan wants to take the church, amen, and take every power that he possibly can out of the church, amen, but he can't do it unless we Sell it to him. Amen. A lot of folks, amen, I'm afraid, are giving it up easy. Amen. They've given it up easy. Amen. They haven't even put a price. They put a free sticker on it and said, take my testimony. Don't want it anymore. Amen. But we find here in our text, amen, that, uh, that, that uh, Jacob says, sell me this day thy, thy birthright, amen. We find that, uh, that, that uh, uh, in, in a sense, amen, this is, uh, and let me say this to you, this isn't thing, anything noble Jacob's doing, amen. This is wickedness. This is deceit, amen. But verse 32 stopped me in my tracks. I'll tell you where I, when I got this message. I got this message in Sunday school last week downstairs in teen class. No, nobody really spent a lot of time on verse 32, but verse 32, God brought it up to me 55 times this week, I'm telling you. Amen. Verse 32, it said, And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And he reasons with himself. And he said, And what profit shall this birthright do to me? Say, preacher, what do you mean? Esau is saying in verse 32, what is this birthright worth to me? I mean, what is, is it worth? I, he's, I, I, let me say this to you. I don't really believe he was at the point to die. Amen. He was tired. Amen. God, God, I don't think God was about to take him out off the scene right here. I do not think that in, in any way, shape, or form. If you believe that this morning, you're fine to believe that. We won't argue about it. Amen. But that's my humble belief in that. I don't believe he was really at the point to die. Amen. But I believe that's what his mind, that's what Satan had put in his mind. Amen. That, hey, I've got to compromise or I'm not going to make it. Amen. And let me say that's what Satan Amen. They're putting in their mind, I've got to compromise or I'm not going to make it. Amen. And Satan's not only doing that to our young people today, but he's also doing that to our old people today. <laughs> amen. He's putting in our minds, amen, that I've got to compromise or I'm not going to make it. Amen. If I don't compromise, I won't get through.
If I don't uh, just uh, move a little bit off my belief and say, Preacher, what do you mean? I, you hear that everywhere. Amen. You'll hear it everywhere you go. Amen. Well, we can't plan to win the world. Amen. If we're really uh, so uh, uh, all over that King James Bible. Well, I make no apology. Amen. I stand upon this King James Bible and I'm not moving off of it. Amen. Uh, well, we really can't win the world if we are stuck in the old time way. My Bible, uh, this King James Bible, I don't know about the other ones. It said to seek out the old past. Amen. And when you find them walk therein. Amen. I, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to stay in the old time way. Amen. Amen. Let me say this to you. They'll say, we've got to change everything. We've got to have a program here. we got to do this and we've got to do that. we got to get modern music in and all these other things. Amen. That most of it straight out of the pits of hell. Amen. And they'll say, we got to get that to reach people these days. It's a little compromise or we ain't going to make it. That's what Satan says. Just a little compromise or you ain't going to make it. Amen. Let me say this to you this morning, church. Amen. That's, that's what that's Satan comes to Esau here. He, says, he, he gets in his ear and Esau says, I'm at the point to die. But then he says something that's so shocking. He said, what profit, or, yeah, what profit shall this birthright do to me? Amen. Say, so, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. He's saying, what is it really worth? Can I say this to you? I want to preach on this thought this morning. Lord, being my helper, just... just Short hope, amen, on why I can't sell out. Why I can't sell out. Amen. I can't sell out to the things of this world. Amen. I can't sell out. Amen. I, 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 can't, I can't stop preaching out of this King James Bible and preaching that this King James Bible is the only Bible. Amen. Because God's not the author of confusion. And if God's not the author of confusion, then God wouldn't write multiple books and have them all be the authority. Amen. But one says one thing and another says another. That don't make any sense. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, I can't stop standing upon uh, the, the principles of the Word of God. Amen. I can't stop. Let me say this to you. And this, uh, this uh, I hope this helps you. Amen. I can't stop coming back to the house of God. Amen. I can't stop it. Amen. I can't stop. Amen. Uh, studying my Bible. Amen. I can't stop uh, getting in my prayer closet. Amen. Why? Because there's some things that are just worth it. Amen. Amen. I want to preach why I can't sell out. Say, preacher, why? Well, let me say this. Esau, he, he had his moment there in verse 32. He's saying, what profit shall this birthright do to me? Amen. He's saying, is this really worth it? Amen. Well, let me tell you some things, amen, that I believe are worth it this morning. Amen. I can't sell out, number one, because God's worth it. Because God is worth it. Amen. God Himself. Let me say this to you, amen. Nobody's done for you more than what God's done for you. Amen. Uh, no, uh, nobody, amen. Uh, let me, it, it blows my mind, amen, uh, that this week more folks have been more concerned, amen, about two gentlemen that will never know your name. They ain't never give you a, Lincoln, a, a, a red Lincoln penny. Amen. They ain't never give you a thing. Amen. And by the way, they ain't going to. Amen. I don't care a little bit about you. Don't care a little bit about me. Amen. But we'll get so worked up and, and, and lose friendships and lose witnesses. Amen. Over stuff like that. Amen. When we've got a Savior. Amen. That died on the cross to save you out of his devil's hell. Amen. Knowing you was going to disobey him. Knowing you was going to do wrong. And knowing. Amen. That we were going to uh, uh, fail him. Amen. And still. Amen. Died on the cross. Laid his life down. The Bible said in John chapter number 10. No man taking it from me. Amen. I lay my life down on myself. He said, I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it again. Amen. Let me say this to you, friend. Amen. Nobody's done for you what the Lord's done for you. Amen. Nobody's going to do for you what the Lord will do for you. Amen. I, I've found this in my life. Amen. That there are uh, things that uh, folks uh, cannot do for me that God can. It's just simple. Amen. I've got great parents that would do everything in the world for me, but there's things they can't do. I've got a great church here. I, I believe it. I, I really do. You'd do anything you could for me, but there's things you can't do. Amen. And vice versa, there's things that I, I could do for you, amen, but there's some things I can't do. Amen. But there ain't nothing that God can't do. Amen. Well, a matter of fact, just a, a few chapters before this, amen, here in the book of Genesis, amen, God comes by and says, is anything too hard for God? 
Is anything too hard for God? Amen. Let me say this to you, friend. Amen. This morning, say, preacher, you don't know my problem. You don't know my God. Amen. And my God's never found a problem, amen, that He couldn't solve. Amen. He's, hey, let me say this. Say, preacher, I'm scared of COVID-19. God ain't. Amen. amen. Preacher, I'm scared of cancer. God ain't. Amen. Preacher, I'm scared of who's in the White House. God ain't. Amen. Uh, preacher, I'm scared of, uh, of, what, of what's going to come and what's going to happen. God ain't. Amen. amen. God's not scared of it. Amen. I'm, pr- I'm afraid of what man's going to do to me. God ain't. Amen. God's not scared of it. Amen. There's nothing too hard for Him. Amen. Nobody can do for you what God can do for you. Amen. And what God will do for you. Amen. I'm telling you what, I didn't know when I got saved everything that God has to offer. I just didn't want to go to hell. Amen. That's why I got saved. Amen. I didn't realize that I would have a companion that would be there when everybody else walks out. Say, preacher, you had some moments when everybody else walked out? Yeah. You will too. Amen. You will too. Amen. Say, so preacher, what, what do you mean? I mean, when you really get to standing upon the principles of God, amen, people will get mad. Amen. amen. Why? Because Jesus warned us about it in John chapter 15. He said, if the world hate you, know that it hateth me before it hated you. Amen. amen. Friend, let me say this to you. God ain't never been popular, and He's never going to be popular. Amen. Amen. Never going to be popular, amen. Uh, not down here, amen. One day, amen, uh, the, the whole congregation is going to be singing, Worthy is the Lord, amen. By the way, as a matter of fact, one day the atheist is go- no longer going to be an atheist, amen. I-, I was thinking about that the other day, amen. I've said that before, amen. But you know, the atheist is about to go extinct. Amen. My Bible says every knee should bow and every tongue should confess. Amen. That means this. Amen. There'll be no more atheists. Amen. They'll go extinct. Amen. And the devil worshipers, there'll be no more. Amen. Because they're going to confess Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. And those things. Amen. Uh, there won't be any pagans anymore. Amen. Uh, because God is King. Amen. Amen. And they will bow down to Him. Amen. Amen. Let me say this to you. You know who they won't bow down to? Amen. Anybody else? Amen. 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 That encompasses a pretty good lot, don't it? Amen. That means any celebrity you can think of. They ain't going to bow down to them. Amen. Amen. They're not worth it. Amen. Amen. They're not worth losing your testimony over. Amen. Amen. Let me say this to you. Any, Any political leader... It's not worth losing your testimony over. Right. Amen. Amen. Any, any friend you've got is not worth losing your testimony. By the way, matter of fact, if they're really your friend, you shouldn't have to lose your testimony over them. Right. Amen. 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 Uh, Dad was talking this morning. I, I didn't want to speak up and interrupt him. But that 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Be ye not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Amen. Say, preacher, it don't matter who I hang around with. Yes, it does. You didn't get that out of the Bible, if you think that. Amen. Amen. I, I, I mean, let me say this. You're not going not to, the, 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 the celebrity's not worth it. Amen. The political person's not worth it. Your friends are not. Let me throw this in there, and this might sting a little bit. But your family is not worth you losing your testimony. Amen. I love my family. Amen. Amen. I've got good family. Amen. But let me say this to you, friend. At the end of the day, they're not worth me losing my testimony. Amen. Hey, the only one worth it this morning is God. Amen. God's worth it. Amen. And God won't make you lose your testimony, by matter of fact. Amen. I can't quit. Amen. I can't sell out. Amen. Because God's worth it. Amen. And for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. That's God that did that. Amen. That's how much God loved you. Amen. Say, preacher, I don't feel like the Lord loves me. Amen. Look at the cross for a little while. Amen. You'll find out. Amen. And the Bible said, greater love hath no man than this. Then a man lay down his life for his friends. Amen. Say, preacher, I don't feel like the Lord loves me. Look at the cross for a little while. <laughs> You'll find out. Amen. And let me say this to you. I say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. Hebrews 13, 5. Amen. It's written. Amen. He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I don't feel like the Lord loves me this morning, preacher. Amen. Look around. Look around. Amen. We're blessed. Amen. We're here this morning. Amen. I, I saw some folks a minute ago when I, I, I got up there to uh, pick guitar on that one song and uh, some folks were fanning. Y'all wasn't playing the same. You was playing the fan. Amen. 
Amen. And say, so preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. Praise God. We got the ability to have heat. Praise God, we've got the ability to be uncomfortable. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We can ride down the road. Mom, I'm sorry. We can ride down the road, and Mom, one minute, will say, I'm hot. And she'll whoosh, turn that thing all the way on full blast air. <laughs> wait. But wait, there's more. Five seconds will pass by. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. Golly, I'm freezing to death. <laughs> and the thing all the way on heat. Amen. Praise God we have the ability to be that uncomfortable. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God we have the ability, amen, to get too hot, amen. Praise God we have the ability to get too cold, amen. Hey, friend, uh, you, can I say this to you, amen? Uh, can I throw this at you this morning? God's been good to us, amen, to give us, amen, uh, something to complain about. Amen. Amen. Let me say this to you, friend. God, amen, is enough for you and I, amen. And God, God's done so much for us, amen. Let me say this. Think of what God did for Israel. Think of what God did for Israel. I mean, He, he, he led them out of Egypt. Amen. And, and in doing so, He parted a sea. Amen. I don't know if you've ever been to the ocean or anything like that. Amen. But I can stand there and stomp my feet. I can get a stick and put it down and do everything. Amen. But it don't part it. Amen. Amen. And we can get every scientist, every uh, smart person, amen, and every idiot as well. Amen. Get them all out there. Amen. And have them stand there with a stick and they won't part it. Amen. But God can do that. Amen. God can do that. Amen. God's done great things. Amen. God delivered Daniel out of that lion's den. Amen. Amen. You don't, don't, you, I don't think you ought to go down there to the Knoxville Zoo and jump in the pen with the lions. Amen. If you do, don't wear the church shirt on that day. Okay. Because <laughs> I don't want to see that on WBIR. I'm telling you what. Amen. Amen. It looks like they were a member of Way of the Cross. No, cut it off. Amen. <laughs> Russell Bivin, no. Amen. But, uh, but no, amen. I don't think that's a smart move for you to do, amen. Uh, but Daniel was cast into there. Amen. And he was delivered right out of it. Not a scratch on his body. Amen. I read a book, amen. They were cast into a fiery furnace because they wouldn't obey the law of the land. Boy, that's, that won't preach much in 2020. But they wouldn't obey the law of the land because it went against the law of God. Amen. Amen. Can I remind you of this? When the law of the land goes against the law of God, you got a choice to make. Right. Amen. you got a choice to make. Amen. As a child of God, there's only one right choice to make, by the way. Amen. But let me say this to you. Amen. They were cast in a fiery furnace. Amen. But my Bible reads that, that not a, a single bit of them was burned. Amen. The men that cast them in, they didn't even go in the furnace for burn up. Amen. Uh, but they weren't. Amen. Why? Because God was in there with them. God delivered them. Amen. Time and time again. Amen. There's times. Amen. Uh, where, where folks should have been dead. While you keep reading in your Bible. Amen. You'll find here in Genesis. Amen. Old Joseph. Amen. He was in a pit. Sold out by anyone, amen. Hey, uh, say, preacher, I've had a bad day. You ain't had that bad of a day yet. Amen. amen. But I find just a few chapters later, he went from the pit to the palace. Amen. amen. Only God could do that. Right. Amen. Only God can take somebody from the lowest pit to the highest palace. Amen. Only God can do that. Let me say this to you this morning, church. Amen. I can't sell out because God's worth it. Amen. Esau said, what profit shall this birthright do to me? Let me say this to you. I can't sell out. I can't sell out on my testimony. I can't sell out on my witness. Not only because God is worth it this morning, but heaven is worth it. Heaven is worth it. Amen. I don't know. I, I, I told somebody yesterday, uh, you know, uh, they give the news of who's supposedly going to be the president. I, I feel like it's probably going to change about five times between now and January. Amen. With the way things are going. And Kanye might end up with it after it's all over. Amen. 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 I'm waiting for the Scooby Doo gang to come in and unmask Joe Biden, and it was Kanye all alone. Amen. That's what's going, that's what's going to happen. Amen. Amen. And I would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for you meddling kids. Anyway, but uh, uh, no. Amen. I, I, I saw that, you know, that come out yesterday, and 
Boy, I've had a field day on Facebook. I, I just love laughing at people. I'm just going to be honest with you. Amen. And somebody said, well, the world as we know it is now ending. I said, that must have been in the 67th book of the Bible that I ain't got yet. <laughs> Who would have thunk it? I, I, matter of fact, I almost got real smart elky. <laughs> Amen. Lord, stop me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> And said, well, I guess we really should have voted for him then if that was the key to getting out of here. <laughs> Amen. The church, I should have been campaigning. I didn't know that. Amen. Amen. But say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. Amen. Uh, 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 the, the folks are, uh, are claiming the world's going in, claiming that this is this and this is that. Friend, let me say this to you. I've I, been looking for a long time before this presidential election ever, even came about. Amen. I'm looking for a country. Amen. That's far better than this country. Amen. I'm looking for a country where there'll be no Republican and there'll be no Democrat. Amen. I'm looking for a country. Amen. When, when God is, where God is king. Amen. And he'll never be up for election. Amen. I'm looking for a country, amen, amen, where sin's going to be gone, amen. The things of this world, amen, is going to pass away, amen. Let me say this to you. Uh, why The Apostle Paul put it this way in uh, Romans chapter number 8. He said, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed within us. Amen. He said, did you get what he said in that verse? He said, the sufferings of this present time, not only, amen, are they not to be compared but they're not worthy to even be mentioned. He said, they're not worthy to be compared. He said, we'd be doing God a disservice if we compared the heartaches of this world with heaven. (laughs) Think about that for a minute, amen? It's going to be a distant memory. Amen, a distant memory. Amen, amen. Matter of fact, it's going to be so distant, I don't think we're going to remember it. Amen. 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 I'm ready to leave this world. Amen. Uh, the Apostle Paul also wrote in another place in 2 Corinthians 4. Amen. He said, Our light affliction is but for a moment. Amen. He said, It, it worketh for a far more exceeding a greater reward for us. Amen. Say, so, preacher, what's that mean? This is the, that's the same chapter, by the way. That's verse 17 of that chapter where earlier in the chapter Paul was talking about being in chains. Amen. Troubled on every side. Amen. Perplexed. Amen. That meant this. He looked on his right hand, didn't have a friend. Looked on his left hand, didn't have a friend. Looked ahead of him, didn't have a friend. Looked behind him, didn't have a friend. And said, for my light affliction. Somebody breaks a nail and they won't be back at church tonight. But Apostle Paul said, I I can't find a friend nowhere. But this light affliction, it it ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. It's, it's working in me with a glory that's going to be revealed one day. Amen. Let me say this to you. Amen. Let me say this to you. The things of this world, amen, are going to pass away. Amen. amen. Let's say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. I wrote down some things. Amen. I hope you don't mind. I wrote this down. Some things that won't be in heaven. Amen. There won't be a funeral in heaven. Amen. We'll never go to a funeral. Ever again. Amen. I, I, I get worried. I, I don't know about if anybody else. Amen. I get worried when somebody in the church gets sick. Say, preacher, why? Because I don't want to go to another funeral. I don't want to preach another one. I've preached enough. I, I, I say, preacher, what do you mean? I, I mean this. After the first one I preached, I said, I, I, I'm good if the Lord doesn't have me preach another one. I, I'd rather do anything, amen, than preach a funeral. Amen. Say, so preacher, what do you mean? I, I, that's just, that's just my, my heart this morning. Amen. But there will be no more funerals up there. Can I say this to you? There'll be no more tears. Amen. There'll be no Satan. Think about that. There'll be no tempter. Amen. That pearly white city, no tempter is found there in that city is what that song says. Amen. He won't, he won't be there. There'll be no tempter there. Amen. There'll be no temptation since there's no tempter. Amen. Somebody ought to shout. Amen. You ain't dealt with the devil this week apparently. Amen. There'll be no sin there. Amen. We won't turn on the TV and they'll be sin on the TV. Matter of fact, I don't even know if there's going to be a TV there. I don't know if we'll have need for one. Amen. Uh, up there, amen. Uh, let me say this to you. Amen. Uh, there, there, there will be no politics. There will be no stress. No stress. Amen. Let me say this to you. No sorrows. Amen. Uh, this, this, this next one better get a shout from the Baptist church. There'll be no bills. 
Amen. Amen. Won't owe nobody. Amen. Amen. There'll be no bills. Amen. Let me say this to you. There'll be no bad days. Amen. Anybody in here ever had a bad day? Some of y'all are doing real good. Some of y'all didn't raise your hand. I'm about to come ask you how, how what's your secret. Amen. Let's call time out and hit pause on the video. I gotta figure out some things. Amen. Let me ask you that again. Anybody ever had a bad day? Amen. That should be all of us. Right. Amen. Let me say this to you. We won't in heaven. There won't, there won't be a moment in heaven where we get the call that your loved one has cancer. There'll never be that phone call. There'll never be that phone call that so-and-so has died in a car crash on the interstate. We won't get that call. Amen. We won't, we won't get that call that, uh, 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 that, that, that so-and-so has, has, has killed so-and-so and that uh, so-and-so's back in the jail because they've relapsed on the drugs and things of that nature. Amen. We won't be getting those calls. Amen. Those calls won't be ringing up there in heaven. Amen. Amen. That ought to be a good thing for us. Amen. Let me say this to you, friend. Amen. There's a lot of things that's going to be absent in heaven, but there's one thing that's going to be very present, and that is the Lord. Amen. Amen. That is the Lord. Amen. The Bible said that there is no need for light up there because He's the light. Amen. You think about that, amen. That means this, amen. Folks that uh, live in this haughty lifestyle that say, well, I, I, if uh, parade them signs, if Jesus comes back, kill him again, you won't even be able to look at him. You won't even be able to look at him. Amen. He, there's no need for light because he is the light, amen. His face is going to shine upon us, amen. Let me say this to you, friend, amen. Uh, uh, heaven is worth it this morning, amen. Amen. I can't sell out. Because God's worth it. I can't sell out not only because God's worth it, but I can't sell out because heaven's worth it. But oh, let me tell you this. I can't sell out because the sinner's worth it. The sinner that's on their way to hell this morning is worth it for me to keep my testimony. Amen. It's worth it for me when Satan comes by and says, hey, just, sell, just sell out. It's worth it for me to say no because of that sinner. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. And I'm going to stay, say a statement right here that, that may shock you. But if you're comfortable with anyone dying and going to hell, don't wait till I get done preaching before you hit the altar. Get right with God this morning. Say, preacher, you don't know what they've done to me. You don't know what Christ did for them. You don't know how guilty they are. You don't know how guilty you are. How guilty I am. But you don't know how merciful God is. How merciful God's been to me. Amen, how good He's been to me. I don't deserve to be on my way to heaven, but that's where I'm going. Amen. I deserve to be in hell this morning. Amen. You deserve to be in hell this morning. Amen. If you've committed one sin, you deserve to be in hell. Amen. Amen. I heard a preacher say it like this once. He said, uh, uh, say, those that say they have no sin weren't around when they were a baby. He said, because those babies will cry when they really don't need anything. And they lying. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. So they, they, they wasn't around when they were a baby. They done sin. They don't even realize it. Amen. They think they're perfect. Amen. Let me say this to you. You committed one sin. You're worthy of hell. Amen. You're worthy. I, I can't stand it. I can't stand it when folks stand up and say, well, uh, so-and-so, uh, they're, they're going to rot in hell and so-and-so this and so-and-so that. And, the, the, and I get it. I understand the emotion of it. Amen. I, I don't like the terrorists. I don't like those type of that raw emotion of wanting to be uh, maybe a patriot for your country and things of that nature. But don't you dare boast in the fact that anyone's going to rot in hell. Amen. Amen. I deserve hell just as much as Osama bin Laden does. Amen. 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 I've sinned. Amen. According to my Bible in James chapter number 2, if you're guilty in one point, you're guilty of the whole thing. Amen. It said that, that you might uh, uh, not uh, commit adultery, but if you've murdered, you're guilty of adultery. That's what the example the Bible gives. Amen. Say, preacher, I've never taken a drink of alcohol in my life. Praise the Lord. That's good for you. Amen. But if you've told one white lie, you're a drunk. Amen. Just as guilty. Just as guilty. Amen. Amen. Let me say this to you, friend. Amen. If you're comfortable with anyone going to hell, getting an altar this morning. Amen. Let me say this to you. Let me ask you this. Let me really, really, really ask you this. 
Is your neighbor worth it? That sinner, amen, that, 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 that neighbor that might be dying and on their way to hell, are they worth it to not sell out? Say, so, preacher, what do you mean? What about those co-workers? Amen. What about those co-workers you see every day? A lot of us, I, I, I hear the prayer requests a lot. Amen. And folks praying for their co-workers. Hey, they're worth it. They're worth it. Say, so what about that co-worker that don't like me? It's still worth it. It's still worth it. Amen. What about that co-worker that is dumb? Amen. I work for the government. I, they all work with me. I don't know what you're talking about. Laugh a little bit. That's all right. Amen. Some of y'all really feel like your co-workers are dumb. Amen. You're really saying, no, he's lying. Amen. He's lying. Amen. I know they work with me. Amen. No. Amen. Uh, even so. Amen. Uh, even, even them. Even the ones that aggravate you and get on your nerves. They're worth it. They're worth it. Amen. Even that one that seems like you can't win them. They're worth it. They're worth it. How about this? What about your friends? Amen. I, I mean, is, are your friends worth, worth seeing going to heaven? Amen. I, I mean, those that you hold dear, those that, that, that you could call and they'd answer the phone. Amen. That's hard to find people like that in 2020. Amen. I, I, I mean, I, I, what, what about those? Amen. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I, I mean this to you. What about your enemies? Are your enemies worth it? Well, you know what would be good this morning? It would be good to say, Preacher, I ain't got nothing to go to the altar for. When's the last time you prayed for your enemies? When's the last time you really got down and earnestly prayed, God, 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 be merciful unto them? Say, Preacher, bless God, I want to pray that God will, uh, God will uh, disturb them. Why don't you pray God be merciful unto them? Amen. They deserve mercy just as much as you deserve mercy, which means none of us deserve mercy. Amen. Amen. Let me say this to you. Amen. What about that family? Amen. What about that family member? Amen. Amen. Uh, that, 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 that's on their way to hell. Are they worth it this morning? Are they worth you selling out everything just to see them die and go to hell? Amen. Amen. What about those kids? What about those kids? Can I say this to you? I'm glad that some people in my life didn't sell out. I'm glad I, I, I don't have a perfect mom and daddy, and you don't either. But they brought me up in the house of God. They didn't sell out. Because I was worth it. They could have quit when I come along. Amen, but I was worth it. Amen, I'm thankful for some old-time preachers. Brother George Dotson, he's, who was my pastor when I got saved, he's done going on to heaven now. You know, the Bible says their works do follow them. You're looking at his works Amen. right up here in his pulpit. I'm glad that, that he didn't sell out. I'm glad that he saw a young boy in his congregation that needed salvation. Didn't sell out, didn't bring in uh, the, the, the rock concert with the smoke coming out underneath the stage, amen, and throw out the King James Bible just to, to pet me on behind the ears and tickle me, amen. But no, rather stood and told me that as a six-year-old boy, if I knew I was lost, I was on my way to hell. Amen. And he didn't go to mom and daddy and say, can I preach on hell to your son? He didn't ask for, for permission. Amen. He talked to God about it. God gave him permission and he preached. Amen. Let me say this to you. I'm glad he didn't sell out. Amen. Boy, I'm glad. I'm glad that these folks, amen. Amen. Let's say, preach, what do you mean? I mean this. Can you just think about this for a minute? You wouldn't be here today if somebody had sold out. Man, I, I, I've been listening to a song. I just heard it on the radio probably two or three weeks ago and I downloaded it on my iPod there. I've been listening to it uh, every now and then. And, uh, uh, it says, uh, the song says, I'd like to shake the hand of the preacher that reached out a hand to me. Say, so, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. Uh, that, that song saying, not just shake the hand of the preacher that prayed with me, but the, but, but the one that prayed for that preacher. The one that didn't sell out for him to keep going. Because there's a trickle down effect. Amen. It worked. For, say, say preacher what do you mean? I, I mean this to you. I, I mean this to you this morning. I'm glad that mom and daddy didn't sell out. But more so than that. I'm even glad. More glad. Amen. That their mom and daddy didn't sell out. 
Amen. Amen. That they, that, hey, uh, somebody uh, generations ago uh, didn't sell out. Amen. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this this morning. Amen. You're here today. Amen. If you're saved, you're on your way to heaven because somebody along the way didn't sell out. Amen. Amen. Somebody didn't sell out. Can I say this to you? I say this to you and I'm done. Somebody. Somebody somewhere, it may be your co-workers, it may be your family, it may be your friends, it may be your enemies. But somebody, somewhere, needs you to not sell out today. Somebody somewhere needs you to make a decision that I'm not going back. Amen. It got quiet in here. It can get quieter than that. Amen. Uh, 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 Somebody needs you to make that decision that I've come too far to go back now. Amen. Somebody somewhere is on the brink of dying and going to hell. Amen. And they need you to not sell out. Amen. Esau said, what profit shall this birthright do to me? Say, preacher, what do you mean? He was on the brink of quitting. Singers, come. Y'all get a song ready. He was on the brink of quitting. Amen. And what happened? He did it. He quit. And there ain't a lot positive ever said about Esau ever again. Matter of fact, Esau's not mentioned for a long time. Amen. In your Bible. Amen. Matter of fact, and guess what? He loses out on a whole lot of his future because he sold out right here. Amen. God's got some things for you and your future. Amen. That you can't see right now. Amen. But if you sell out right now, you'll never see them. Amen. You'll never see them. Amen. You might be on the brink of quitting. Let me say this to you. Don't quit. Don't quit. Everyone stand this morning. I don't know what your need is, but the altars are open. Whatever your need may be.